Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 2nd of February, it's February already. As always, I have the updates, so you can jump to any particular one and there are a lot of updates this week. New videos this week, so I dived into the Azure VMware solution. This was a huge amount of fun, learned a huge amount about it, what it is, how it functions, how you can seamlessly migrate and actually do a remotion from on-prem to the Azure AVS solution halfway across the world with no downtime. So that was hugely fun. And then I dived into Defender for Identity, thinking about bringing visibility to our non-entra uh, identity services like our Active Directory domain servers, certificate services, federation servers, but also some additional things. So I dive into that. Onto the updates. So Red Hat OpenShift has some updates. This is obviously the managed Azure solution. And really this is about the resource health for the clusters getting better integrated with Azure Monitor with the signaling and the alerting. And then the Azure Kubernetes service, the cube preserved memory has been optimized. And I talked about this before, but it's now obviously gone GA. And it's all about with the 1.29 and later, it's made this huge reduction in the amount of reserved memory freeing up more memory for other workloads. Obviously it still has to reserve a certain amount for the core containers it needs for the Kubernetes components itself, but it has reduced that. I can now change the egress, so the outbound type of an AKS cluster post creation. So that could be a load balancer, NAT gateway, I can use user-defined routes to send it to something else, but I can now modify that egress traffic for the cluster. By default, uh, SSH is enabled for AKS. Well, I can now disable that if maybe I consider that insecure, maybe some path to do bad things on my AKS cluster. Well, now in preview, I can disable the secure um, shell. And I can now get information about the nodes that make up my AKS cluster from the Azure Resource Manager. So I could always get this information before through the Kubernetes API, but what I can now do is I can get some basic information, the node information, the private IPs using ARM. So maybe I don't have access to the Kubernetes API, but I still want some basic node information, maybe for troubleshooting purposes. Well, I can now do that in preview. And I can now do Istio upgrades. Remember, Istio is a service mesh. If I think about, hey, I have all my different containers, microservices, well, they need the ability to maybe talk to each other, to discover each other, to have management, observability, security, um, different types of traffic splitting. Well, that's what these service meshes do. So now I can do a minor version upgrade and it does a, a canary deployment. So it deploys the new version side by side with the old. So it gives me the opportunity to make sure it's working correctly. And then I can move things over to the new version and turn off the old. And the VS Code extension for Azure Kubernetes service has been enhanced. There's a better AKS cluster creation experience. There's enhanced network capabilities around packet capture and TCP dumps. I have improved reconcile and abort options for the cluster. Durable functions now has distributed tracing v2 in preview. So remember, the whole point of a durable function is I can do things like um, span out and then span back in, I can have function chaining, I can have asynchronous work, I can wait for some human action. So now with the distributed tracing, I can bring correlation between the different services may be part of that into a single place, which makes it easier to see that end-to-end -end, uh, workflow and if there are particular problems. And there's also now Azure Functions extension v3 in preview that's really got some big improvements about the Azure storage backend. And then Azure Functions now supports Java version 21 on Linux in preview. And Azure Container Apps now supports additional TCP ports and that has gone GA. So remember the whole point of Azure Container Apps is it's built on AKS but it abstracts away the AKS, but it adds things like Dapper and Keda and network capabilities. So I can really just focus on my microservices so now I can have an additional five ports 
Now those five ports have to be unique across the environment. So I have multiple apps running in my ACA environment. They can't use the same five ports, but I can have five additional ports uh, that can be leveraged. On the networking side, so there's a new guided express route multi-site resiliency experience. Now, I wanted to show it, but this morning, I can't find it anymore. So if you go and deploy a resource and you search for express route, there'll be a brackets preview option. At time of recording, it's not there. I don't know if maybe they've pulled it to make some update, but what it did is it would enable you to now select multiple MeetMe locations. Remember, MeetMe is, is where the Microsoft Backbone Network connects to other networks. So for resiliency, let's say my private peering, I don't wanna just go through one peering point because it could fail. And what this experience would do is it would actually let me pick multiple peering points. It would show me the distance between them and help me deploy that so I'm running in a resilient architecture. Again, that, that may be coming back. Uh, maybe it should be pulled temporarily, but hopefully that, that will be back very, very soon because that's a fantastic feature to encourage, hey, I don't wanna ever just use one meet me because that's a single point of failure in our connectivity. And then Azure Virtual Network Manager, so the topology viewer has gone GA. So remember, Azure Virtual Network Manager is all about providing a centralized set of management for my virtual networks. So I can define connectivity patterns that I want between my virtual networks, put them into groups. I can have uh, hub spoke, I can have full mesh capabilities. So now I get a great topology view to actually visualize that and also the security admin rules have gone GA. So security admin rules, I, again, I can centrally manage, and these apply before any network security groups that have been linked to the subnets. So what this enables me to do is, for example, I could just block certain types of traffic, I could allow traffic, and then it would go to the NSGs, and then does it pass through the NSGs? I can do always allow. So if I do always allow, even if the NSG tried to block it, it will allow it through. So if I had maybe an always allow to always get to certain patching infrastructure, that would be a use case for that type of rule. So those rules have now gone GA. So think of it as a funnel. So firstly, the traffic goes through the funnel of the security admin rules, and then it goes through the funnel of the NSGs, unless I do always allow, in which case it goes through that security admin rule funnel and then bypasses the NSG, it will always get to that target. Very useful when I must have that set of communication in my environment. On the storage side, so Azure Storage, storage Actions are in preview. So this enables me to do certain tasks using a, a no-code workflow. I can enable data protection, I could apply uh, tagging on the objects, cost optimization across potentially billions of objects, and I can do this very, very simply. So it's for blobs and uh, Azure Data Lake Gen 2 in select regions. On the database side, a lot of updates. So Azure Data Explorer ingestion via Azure Stream Analytics has gone GA. So this is about being able to leverage a streaming ingestion mode. So when I ingest, there's different modes, but with now this streaming ingestion, I get a near real-time ingestion capability. And this is more useful for smaller sets of data. I get these little micro batches get brought in. But if I need that latency of maybe a couple of seconds and I really want to optimize that for a fairly small amount of data, this is a great option. There's also queued ingestion, which would be a more high ingestion throughput, but it's more based on batches. There's new regions for HD Insight. So that's uh, Italy North and Israel Central. And then Cosmos DB for Postgres SQL. So remember that's the bigger scale version that's using those Citus extensions for Postgres. So I can shard my data, I get those uh, distributed tables, I get a whole set of extra huge scale, huge capabilities there. Well, now I can use my own key for the encryptions, that key would live in my Azure Key Vault. Also now, uh, the same, we get PG audit, audit. So these are audit logs for all or some of the nodes that, that make up the cluster but I'll get writes and reads and role changes, uh, data definition language type commands. I can get detailed session and object audit logging. Um, and I can save it to a storage account. I can send it to an event hub or log analytics workspace. So those regular diagnostic settings targets, uh, I can leverage with the PG audit. SQL managed instance has some new pool features in preview. 
So there are some new 2v co-instances. I can now move an instance in or out of a pool. I can resize the pool. I can do high hardware tier changes. So a lot of nice capabilities there. Uh, the SQL trigger for Azure Functions has gone GA. So this is all about using the SQL change tracking to monitor for changes to a SQL table. So now as a developer, I can very easily perform actions based on those changes, a creation, an update, a delete. I could go and call some function to do some action. PostgreSQL Flexible um, server logs has gone GA. So this again is about, hey, logging for my database instance and saving the results to a file. I can set the number of days retention I want, and then I can download that file from the portal, from the CLI, and maybe I just need better insight into what's happening on the servers. Maybe I'm trying to troubleshoot a particular issue. And then PostgreSQL flexible read replicas are now available in the special regions. So that's the Azure Gov regions and China regions. And again, the read replicas are all about, it's an asynchronous replica. And what's nice about the read replicas, well, maybe it's for resiliency purposes, but I can also offload certain types of activities that don't need to do that right activity. Maybe it's analytics, for example, it's some other maybe local compute workload that just bulk of its actions are read. That's where read replicas are nice. And now I can leverage those in the Gov and the China regions. And then PostgreSQL cross-region restore has gone GA. So when I leverage Azure Backup for my uh, PostgreSQL Backup, I have GRS. So there's a copy of that backup data sent to the paired region. So what this functionality enables me to do is restore to that paired region. That would be useful if the primary region was unavailable or I just want to do a test. I just want to do a test restore. I want to leverage something in the paired region. On the miscellaneous side, so Azure Load Testing now supports 50 test fail criteria. So when I create my test, I have certain performance and quality expectations, and I can define certain criteria that would mean it had failed. This could be a certain error rate. It could be a certain response time exceeds some threshold. So what I can now do is specify 50 up to 50 test failure criteria. And so if any one of those evaluates to true, uh, the test gets a failed status. There's a new enhanced cost export experience. So a lot of this is around the FinOps practices and the open source FinOps open cost and usage specification or focus. And what it enables me to do is if I enable the exports preview experience, I can now export in that format. So I can export my analytics in the focus format. Um, I can actually configure it to export. Maybe this is easier to see uh, quickly if we jump over. So if I was to really quickly just go to my cost management, cost management. So we have exports. Now I have turned on uh, in the previous screen, so the oh, there we go, preview features. So you can see down here, you can go ahead, exports, preview. And then once you've done that, when I go to my export, one of the things I can now do is if I go and create an export, is we get to pick um, the type of data. So as I get this focus option, and I can also pick things like the frequency. Oh, it's gonna make me do a name first. Focus. I can pick the data set version, but then I could do, for example, a daily export and it will overwrite the previous file with an updated one each day, for example. So just, hey, if I'm trying to manage my costs, which hopefully everyone is, and using FinOps to focus not just on the cost, but what is the value of that resource to my business, um, that's a great capability. The Azure Business Continuity Center is available in preview. So this is the ability to, once again, I mean, again, it's easy to show it quickly. Lots of demos today. So if I jump back over the business continuity, it's really focused around helping me identify, well, hey, which resources are protected, which resources aren't protected. I can look at the backup and ASR state for my Azure and VMware resources. I can identify unprotected resources. I can optimize security. I get unified monitoring compliance. There's a bunch of built-in policies this uses. So I can see 
policies for protection and it adds a whole set of its own. But it's just a really nice place to make sure that, hey, I'm, I'm not missing some really important point around the resiliency of my environment. So again, a great resource, go and take a look at that. The Azure API Center has some updates in preview. So remember, this is your one-stop shop for the inventory and management of my organization's API. So it now has an improved web portal-based um, discovery and consumption experience. There's a CLI, Azure CLI extension now for the management of it. Uh, I can do the API management import via the CLI, and there's a, an updated VS Code extension. Azure Monitor Metrics Data Plane API has gone GA. So we could always go and fetch metrics from Azure Monitor, but it would go, I'm going through ARM to fetch those, so there's certain uh, limits you would hit as a certain performance implication of that. So with the Data Plane API, what it lets me do is it's a far more efficient option. I can go and grab and retrieve metric data for up to 50 resource IDs in a single call in the same subscription and region. So I'm gonna get a greatly improved query and performance um, experience. So now I can go and leverage that when I'm trying to gather those metrics for my own purposes. Azure Monitor now has recommended alerts for the managed Prometheus offering. So these are based on the recommended community alerts. It does have to be that Azure Monitor managed Prometheus, but now there are recommended alerts. And we're seeing those in more and more things that, hey, we recommend you enable these alerts and they're very simple to go and enable. Azure Stack HCI has a new release. And the big thing here is they've added the Azure Virtual Desktop to Azure Stack HCI. So remember, Azure Stack HCI is that on-premises, um, hyper-converged set of clusters. So now I've got Azure Virtual Desktop. It's got better consistency for the HCI and the AKS updates on it. Um, it's easier to do the management at scale through the portal for those updates. There's extended VM extension support for things like Defender for Cloud and update management. There's a nice site manager, so I get better organizations by location. And there's just a, a core stack update for things like trusted launch VM support, better deduplication and compression, improved GPU support. So a bunch of great capabilities in that new release. And Azure Site Recovery now has trusted launch VM support in preview. So remember, the whole point of trusted launch is a Gen 2 VM. So Gen 2 VM is UEFI based, enables the virtual TPM. And with trusted launch, we get things like secure boot, we get a measured boot, which is an attestation that there's been no meddling from the hardware really through to that operating system. So now with Azure Site Recovery, I can have the replication of those virtual machines. And finally, Entra updated its overview page. It makes it easier to learn about the entire product suite, identify opportunities to maximize those feature values, and just stay up to date with announcements. And also, the cross-tenant sync now synchronizes this is the manager attribute. So some capabilities there. So lots of updates this week. Uh, as always, I hope that was useful. Until next video, take care.